What's up, guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out a new feature for the SketchUp extension placemaker that allows you to quickly import Google Earth 3D buildings into SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is a brand new feature of the extension placemaker for SketchUp. We've talked about this placemaker before. It has the ability to bring in high resolution near map images, as well as generating 3D buildings and roads based on just uh, picking a location. But in particular, I want to talk about the ability to import Google Earth 3D data into SketchUp. And so the way that this works is, first off, this only works if you have the subscription for placemaker. This isn't, um, it doesn't work with the pay as you go. Um, so this specifically works with the subscription bundle. And so you can download Placemaker at the sketchupessentials.com slash placemaker. Note that that is an affiliate link, meaning I do receive a commission if you do purchase through that link. But you could use this in order to bring in that data. And so what's going to happen is inside of SketchUp, you're going to have to set a couple things up because you basically have to link Placemaker in to um, Google's 3D Earth information. Note this is currently a feature that's still in data, meaning development is still happening. But right now, if I'm in Placemaker and I try to import 3D Earth, notice how it's going to give me an error. And what that error means is I need to set up my access to Google Earth's data repository. And so there's actually a really good instructional article on the Mindsight Studios page that'll explain how to do this. Um, so you can go kind of follow along, but basically what's gonna have to happen is you're gonna have to start by creating a Google account. Um, so you need to have an account with Google and you need to sign into the Google Cloud console. And so when you get to the Google Cloud page, you're going to want to find this drop down right here. You're going to want to click on the drop down. You're going to want to click on the option for new project. And so when you do that, you can create a new project and that's going to give you the ability to name your project, whatever you want. And so once you do that, you just want to click on the button for create. And so then you can select that project from the drop down in order to get into that project and start working with it. And so next you need to type in credentials at the top of the page. So you're gonna click on the button for credentials, and then you wanna click on the option for keys and credentials. And so one thing that you are going to have to do is at a certain point, Google charges for access to this data. Now, I'm not sure what that limit is. There's a pretty high free data limit for bringing in this map data, but you are going to have to enter some kind of payment information in here um, in order to have it on file. Now, note that you're not going to be charged for anything without Google notifying you, but this is just kind of a condition of using the Google data. You can't really get around it. Um, it's something that um, I used a similar extension for Blender and it was the same kind of thing. You do have to put in payment information in order to do this. And so this kind of walks you through all of that, but basically what you want is you want your API key. So this is gonna give you a key that you can then copy and paste over into Placemaker. And so then once you've done that, you need to go into the Map Tiles API in the Google Marketplace. And you just need to make sure that you've enabled the Map Tiles API. Well, once you do that, what you can do is you can copy that API key and pasting it into the API key box. And then once you've done that, you can find a location so we're going to go with somewhere in Denver again. We'll go with downtown Denver. We'll click on the option for select area. Notice how you can click and drag this box in order to pick what area you want to bring in. We're going to click on the option to import area. And so once we've done that, we can then select that area and you can click on the option to import 3D Earth. Now, when you do this, notice how there's three options in here. There's a low, medium, and high level of detail. So low is going to be really good for larger areas. So we're just going to go ahead and click on low right here. We'll click on import 3D earth. And what that's going to do is that's going to import 3D buildings and terrain from Google earth like this. And you may need to give it a minute in order to import all of that data. If you pick the high, it's going to take longer than if you pick the low. All right. If we take a look at this, you can see that basically what this did is this brought in all of these Google Earth 
tiles with all of these buildings. So you can actually see the buildings in here just like this. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting about this is note that when this gets brought in, this gets brought in at the actual real world elevation above the axes, right? So if I draw a line up, remember Denver is the mile high city. And if I check this length, this is somewhere in the ballpark of 5,280 feet, plus or minus. But you can see how that gets brought in up above. Now, one thing to note about that is if you do bring in like the open street map data or anything like that, that data is gonna be brought in down below. So if I bring in the open street map data, that's brought in down to this area right here, rather than above. One thing to note about that is you do probably wanna make sure that you've selected actually this area, not the singular tiles that are up above. So if I click on import roads, you want to make sure that you've selected this map from down below so that you get the entirety of the roads. But those are being created down below, not on the terrain up above like this. Now you could definitely take this and bring it back down and place it in this location. But you can see how this has given us really interesting city data in here that we can then work with. And so let's say we picked another location. So maybe I'll pick this location right here. I'm going to select this area. Note there's a checkbox in here to enable large areas. So if you do that, that'll let you bring in larger geographical areas in here like this. Um, I don't necessarily recommend bringing in all of that data unless you absolutely need it, just because that's going to be a bunch of stuff really slowing down your SketchUp models. Um, but let's say that we were to take, um, let's go with this interchange right here, because there's some high rises over here. We're just going to pick this area. We're going to click on the option to import area like this. So that's just bringing in that data. But let's say we brought this in at a high level of detail. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to select this, and we're going to click on high. This is going to take longer because it's going to be much denser data. And it's also going to be a much larger SketchUp file. So it's going to have better detail, but it's also going to be significantly larger. Um, so you don't necessarily always want to do this, but there's times where you definitely could. And so if we look at this, this came in with a little bit higher detail. Now, obviously, this is all kind of triangulated anyway. Um, you know, this has come from Google's like a 3D scan data. So it's not going to be perfect. But if we look at this, so if we go to our hidden geometry, you're going to notice the geometry on these buildings is a lot denser than the geometry on the other buildings, right? So if we go to our Denver low detail and we look at our hidden geometry, Notice how the triangles are a lot bigger. And actually, if you look at the model information, and I want to check the box for um, nested components, notice how this one has 121,000 edges in it. But if we go to the denser model, and it's a smaller area, this has something like 1.5 million edges for that same area. So depending on what you're trying to do, you may wanna be a little bit careful with the data you bring in. But one of the cool things about this is notice how this does come in and you've even kind of got trees in here. Um, and so if we look at this, notice how these all get brought in as different blocks, right? So like, for example, if I was to take this one and hide it, notice how you can see that those individual buildings will hide as well. And so these all get brought in as blocks. So if you ever need to remove part of a building or hide it, you can just right click and you can hide that building. Um, and then you've got this data in here and, and, and you could come in here and you could model out your own topography inside this model. So you could just hide the different, you could just hide the different blocks that get brought in just like this. Now, one thing to note about this, and you can see it really well right here, is this is actually bringing in like topographical data in the sense that this is all 3D scanned. So there's like a light rail um, stop in here, for example. Well, notice how that's down below the data. And obviously you're limited to um, the quality of the data inside of the data source. The further away from this you get, the better it's going to look. But it's got things like the bridges running over the interstate, other things like that. And again, not perfect data, but um, again, Google Earth probably has some of the best 3D scan data available right now. And notice how you're not getting a bunch of gaps in the mesh or anything like that. So if you're looking to bring in site context using Google Earth, um, this is actually a really good way.
to do that. Now, if there's interest, we can talk a little bit later about actually working with some of this data. Um, but for now, um, go check this out, especially if you're a placemaker subscriber already, bring in some of that data and um, give it a look and let me know what you think. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this data, about the ability to bring in the Google Earth data in general. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.